In this video, we will talk a little bit more about linear transformations. So recall the standard matrix of a linear transformation. You can compute that by checking where the linear transformation takes the vectors 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, all the way up to 0, 0, 1 in Rn will map to. And if you set these as the columns of your matrix, then you get the standard matrix of the transformation. Now that we've discussed bases, we can be a little bit more precise about our statement. What's really happening is you are applying the standard basis of Rn and then writing it down into this column where the columns are going to be written in the standard basis of Rm. Now let us consider a linear transformation that goes from some space V to some space W. Well, instead of using the standard basis, we'll assume that V has some basis and we'll assume W has some basis. Then what would the matrix representation for this linear transformation T be using these bases instead of the standard basis? Let's take some vector V in the space V. Since v1 to bn is a basis, we can write v as some linear combination of b1 to bn. So under this basis b, the vector v can be represented by this column vector because remember, under a basis, we just write down the coefficients in front of the bases and make that into a column vector. Now let's see where t takes this vector v. Using linearity, we can rewrite this as r1 times t of b1 plus r2 times t of b2 plus rn times t of bn. Now t of v is a vector in w, so you should be able to represent it as a linear combination in c1 to cm. So more importantly, you can represent it in some basis c. So on these sides, r1 to rn, they're just numbers. So these vectors, t of b1, t of b2, t of bn, those are going to be column vectors when you represent them in the basis C. But we can rewrite this as a matrix equation where the matrix has columns that are the columns TB1 to TBN multiplied to the vector R1 to Rn. In other words, we can describe this linear transformation acting on some vector V by a matrix multiplication given by this matrix times the vector V. So this is called the matrix for T relative to the basis B and C. So let's take a look at this example. Suppose we have a basis for V and w and we have a linear transformation t defined by t takes b1 to this vector in w and t of b2 is going to be this vector in w then how can we find the matrix for t relative to b and c well t of b1 in the c basis is going to be the column vector 3 negative 2 5 and t of b2 in the c basis is going to be the column vector 4 7 negative 1 so so when we write vectors in a basis, we just write down the coefficients in front of the basis vectors in this order. So the order of the basis does matter. So our matrix is given by this three by two matrix. So why is this at all useful? Well, if we want to compute where a tra this transformation T takes some vector in V, well, V has to be represented as a linear combination of V1 and V2. So let's just say 2V1 plus 3V2. Then how can we figure out what T of V1 is? Well, you would use linearity to rewrite this as 2 times TB1 plus 3 times TB2. And you know that by the definition of a linear transformation, that TB1 goes to this vector vector, TB2 goes to this vector, so then you can write it as one big linear combination of C1, C2, C3, and that's going to be some vector in W. Now that seems kind of a lot to do, so we can instead use this matrix representation. So we know that V can be represented in the B basis as the vector 2, 3. And so this linear transformation can be represented by a matrix multiplication, the matrix representation of the linear transformation T under this basis. And then we just do this matrix times this vector. So if we compute this out, we will get this vector 18, 17, 7. Now this is the vector in W under the C basis. So had we written everything out, we would have gotten this vector in W. Now let's look at a special case. When your linear transformation goes from V to V, then you can use the same basis B or V for both of these. And so the matrix relative to the basis just B is called the B matrix. Now let's consider this example given a linear transformation from P2 to P2 
what is P2? It's the space of degree two polynomials. And the linear transformation will be defined by, it takes a general degree two polynomial and it'll spit out something like this. So it'll make the constant term go away and it'll give the, a, the linear coefficient and then two times the quadratic coefficient. Well, first we should verify that P2 is indeed a vector space or a subspace, but that's not too hard to show because if you add two degree two polynomials, then you get another degree two polynomial. And the zero polynomial is a degree two polynomial. I mean, everything is zero. <laughs> Next, we should check if the transformation that is defined in this way is actually linear. So we need to check if t of u plus v is equal to t of u plus t of v, where u and v are degree two polynomials. So this term will become a1 plus 2a2. Similarly, this term will become b1 plus 2b2x. That should be an x here too. And so if we rearrange this, we get a1 plus b1 plus two times a2 plus b2 times x. Now, if we apply the linear transformation here, then the linear term comes out and we have two times the quadratic term times x. And so we get the same thing. So these are equal. And so the transformation is indeed linear. Now let's let b be the basis one x x squared. You'll have to show that this is a basis, but for now, just take my word that this is a basis for the degree two polynomials. It's certainly spanning. So you also need to show that it's linearly independent. Then the matrix, the B matrix for T will be, first we need to see what the output of these elements are. So T of one will just be zero. T of X will be one because it's just A1 and these things are not there. And T of X square is like everything else is zero except A2 is one. So then you would get two times X. Now, if we rewrite these in the B matrix, then the vector will be something like this because it's the coefficient in front of the basis vectors that represents these elements. So your B matrix for this linear transformation T is given by something like this. Now recall the change of basis matrix from the previous video. Suppose we have two bases B and E for our N, then if we knew what some vector X looked like in the E basis, then we can change it into what X would be in the B basis by multiplying by this matrix P inverse, where P was the matrix, where the columns are the basis vectors for B represented in the E basis, and then you take its inverse. So what if we want to change the basis for a matrix? That is, suppose we have a linear transformation from Rn to Rn given as a matrix multiplication of A. And so this A or this transformation T, we are implicitly using the standard basis. So this is something pretty simple like this. This sort of transformation and the basis that we are assuming is some standard basis of R2. So suppose now that we have another basis B for Rm. So the picture would be if you have your standard basis E1 and E2 and you want to switch to using this basis B. Then how can you compute the B matrix for this transformation? Well, let's do it. By definition of the B matrix for T, we compute this by looking at the column vectors T, B1, T, B, N written in the B basis. Everything is B, right? The B matrix is basically the matrix relative to B and B. So everything is B. But then we can change basis into this E. So the T, B, 1s and the B basis become P inverse times T B one E, where P is this matrix. By matrix multiplication, we can factor this out. And we also know that the transformation is just matrix multiplication and we can factor out the matrix out. But then the leftover matrix B one to B N is just the P matrix. So to compute the B matrix for a transformation, given by something like this is you just need to compute the inverse of your co coordinate change matrix and then do P inverse times A times P. So to summarize what's really going on with this is how it relates to diagonalization. So suppose A is a square matrix and it's diagonalizable. Well, A, some matrix, implicitly there's some sort of basis in the background, usually the standard basis. And then when you diagonalize it, then you write it as the columns of its eigenvectors times a diagonal times P inverse. So what that means is that if you rewrite A in the basis of its eigenvectors, then the diagonal matrix is 
is equal to P inverse A times P. So the diagonal matrix, when you diagonalize it, is just the B matrix for the transformation defined by A, where the basis is given by your N linearly independent eigenvectors. So that's um, what that is. <laughs>